What if you switched on your television and these were your options? You bit lobby to the kid. The Welcome to Egypt, where the media is tacky as hell and works for the government. How do we know that? Egyptian media is actually one of the most popular in the Arab world. It's one of the biggest influences of public opinion and is littered with TV shows that work as a mouthpiece for the country's president and military. Remember when I said the media works for the government? Well, that's because much of Egypt's media is controlled by Sisi's government, which is backed by the Egyptian armed forces. The government actually runs many of the TV, radio stations, websites, magazines, newspapers. And there are laws that restrict press freedom and allow the government to closely monitor the media and crack down on any threatening opinions with ease. In 2014, the Egyptian military announced it had created a miracle. <laughs> And while the military failed to provide the medical community with any evidence for its claim, many were quick to jump on the bandwagon. The hype eventually died down when the military failed to launch the device. But the damage was done. And this isn't even the craziest thing about Egyptian media yet. Attacking other media outlets is another one of their strategies. <laughs> And all of this only contributes to what many have called a graveyard for critical journalism. Media censorship in the country isn't an entirely new phenomenon. It's existed in modern-day Egypt since the 50s. Not everything about the government and its leaders was allowed to be reported. And presidents, most of whom were ex-military leaders, were always using the media to shape public opinion. The Egyptian armed forces have always been glorified and depicted as the protectors of Egypt and its interests. Not only in the media, but in schools, public spaces and entertainment. Analysts say President Sisi's treatment of the media is worse than his predecessors. <laughs> and Reporters Without Borders have even added him to their list of predators of press freedom. So how did it get so bad? The 2011 revolution was a turning point for Egypt. And most importantly, it was a watershed moment for the military who quickly realised the power of the press and social media. They thought if the media wasn't used in their favour, it could once again become a huge threat. And while the press did enjoy more freedom between 2011 and 2013, things changed after Mohamed Morsi was ousted and Abdel Fattah Sisi became president of Egypt the following year. The Egyptian armed forces assumed a more dominant role in Egyptian politics and developed a more assertive and repressive policy towards the media. And while pro-government journalists argued this, Egypt began cracking down on any media that sided with the deposed President Mohamed Morsi or the Muslim Brotherhood, and anybody else who passed as opposition including Al Jazeera, which was banned from Egypt in 2013. Bassem Youssef's popular satire show Al Barnamig started airing after the 2011 revolution and soon became a symbol of resistance for the Egyptian people. His show, which would poke fun at the absurdities of Egypt's governments, media and the military, did experience backlash during Morsi's rule, but was only removed from air by Sisi's administration after a sketch he did in reference to the army crackdown on free speech. Many journalists and outlets moved abroad to continue their work. So Egypt's press today is essentially the voice of the government, i.e. the military, and the military dictates the narrative. And it seems many are happily complicit in the act. Here's how one of Egypt's most popular TV presenters, Ahmed Musa, admitted to it. I would say anything the military tells me to say out of duty and respect for the institution. If you tell a lie big enough and repeat it enough times, 
people will eventually take it as truth. So repeat after me as I repeat after the Egyptian media. CC is great, the army is great. CC is great, the army is great. CC is great, the army is great. Believe it yet?